Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a four-year-old named Kylie and I also have a two-year-old named Mia. So it is officially summertime and if you are on the lookout for summer themed activities to do at home with your children, then you have come to the right place because I've got a bunch of really fun ideas to share with you over the course of the next couple of weeks. And I figured we would go ahead and start off with butterflies because even though butterflies may sometimes be associated with the spring season, where I live in Colorado, we don't really see very many butterflies at all until summertime hits. So from one busy parent to another, here are 12 Montessori inspired butterfly activities that are perfect for toddlers and preschoolers in your Montessori home. So my first activity suggestion is to dig into a good book because you can't go wrong with books. And as a Montessori parent, I'm always on the lookout for books that have beautiful photographs and realistic illustrations. And I found the absolute perfect one for a study on butterflies. It's called A Butterfly is Patient. And I love this book because not only is it filled with very interesting factual information about butterflies, but every page is filled with absolutely stunning realistic illustrations of a whole variety of different species of butterflies. It's a book that both of my girls are in love with and have asked to read many, many times over again. And anytime I find a book that they really like, I'm always very keen to share it with you as well. So definitely check this one out. The next activity is a classic Montessori activity called the Parts of a Butterfly three-part cards. This activity is a really great one for boosting your child's science and language knowledge as not only are they learning what the names of the different parts of a butterfly are, but they can also visually identify them because of the pictures that are included on the cards as well. And what I love about three-part cards is that your child does not have to be a reader yet in order to do this activity. If you have a young toddler, you can simply omit the word label and just use it as a matching activity where they're matching the picture card to the whole control card. And if you have a slightly older child who is experimenting with letter shapes and sounds, even if they aren't fully reading yet, you can still have them match the label card to the control card using what they do know, looking at the letters that they do recognize and the actual order of the letters and the length of the words to help identify the correct matches. Hey. You did. The next activity is one that also boosts your child's science and language skills, and it is sequencing the life cycle of a butterfly. And for this one, your child is tasked with putting the different stages of the life cycle of a butterfly in order using a set of cards that you can very easily DIY at home by yourself. I'll actually put a link in the description box down below to the set that you see us using here. And then after that, they can take it a step further by adding the actual figurines that go along with those matching cards, just to add another level of that sensory input to the activity. And because in a Montessori environment, we want to provide our children with as many real life hands-on experiences as possible, why not take it a step further? Instead of only reading about the life cycle of a butterfly or experiencing it through an activity like the one we just talked about, which is great in and of itself, if possible, offer your child the opportunity to witness for themselves, to have a hand in experiencing this amazing process of metamorphosis, of a caterpillar actually transforming into a butterfly before their very own eyes through this next activity, which is raising caterpillars. There are a variety of online retailers that sell butterfly kits that contain everything that you need in order to raise your caterpillars. And all you need to do is order the cup of caterpillars online and have them mailed to your home. The kit that we used for this came from Amazon and I will put a link to it in the description box down below. It was actually much easier than I anticipated it was going to be. As soon as the caterpillars arrived, they already had food in the bottom of their cup and we basically just had to observe them growing over the course of about seven to 10 days. And it was really neat to be able to see just how much bigger they got over the course of that time. Eventually they did attach themselves to the bottom inside of the cup lid where they hung in a J shape for about a day until they finally hardened into the actual chrysalis. Two of our chrysalises were knocked off of the top of the cup by the other caterpillars and fell into the bottom, which we found out is actually totally normal. It happens all the time and they were very easily able to be relocated into the habitat to hatch out into butterflies along with the other three that were still attached to the cup lid when all was said and done. So after about another week, 
our butterflies finally emerged out of their chrysalises, fully formed. We kept them for about another day or two in the habitat, placed some little orange slices in the bottom so that we could observe them feeding, which was really fun to watch. And then on the third day, we decided that it was time to release them. So we took them outside and the girls were actually able to reach their hands into the habitat. A couple of the butterflies actually landed on them and they were able to release them all by themselves, which was an incredible experience for them. The next activity is a music activity. It's a poem or a song about the transformation of a caterpillar into a butterfly. This was a printable that I found online. The girls had a lot of fun trading out different instruments and singing the song many, many times over again until they actually memorized it and my older daughter was running around the house the rest of the day singing it to herself. And you can't really go through an entire study on butterflies without incorporating some kind of arts and crafts activity. So the one that we selected was a monarch butterfly craft. The template for this activity came from a free printable that I found online, which I will link down below for you. I was not particularly worried about the girls making it look like a real butterfly per se. I gave them complete creative license to decorate their butterflies however they wanted. And once they were done, they had to cut all the pieces out and glue them together. Again, not looking for perfection. They're actually both very into practicing their cutting skills right now. So I allowed them to cut to the best of their ability and then we glued to the best of their ability and they were incredibly proud of their final products. The next activity is a sensorial activity and it's a butterfly matching or memory game. So I say matching or memory game because it really depends on your child's age and abilities. If you have a younger toddler, this is probably going to work best as a matching activity where you offer your child just a small handful of butterfly pictures that have matches and allow them to match each one in turn, just like any other classic matching activity. But if you have a slightly older child who perhaps this is a little bit too easy for, you can up the challenge by turning it into a memory game. So choose just a small number of the butterfly matching cards, mix them up in random order and lay them down in a grid and play the classic game of memory with your child. The next activity is a math activity. It is butterfly number cards. So for this one, your child has a set of butterfly themed number cards from zero to nine as well as a set of Montessori colored beads, or you could substitute cards that have the colored beads printed on them, or you could also try a little basket or bowl of some counters. And the task is for your child to first place the number cards in order from zero to nine, and then to match those colored bead bars to each of the different number cards. Again, if you are using cards that have the bead bars printed on them, then you could have them match that card to the proper numbered card, or if you're using a small little bowl of counters, then your child can treat this almost like a cards and counters activity where they're just counting out the proper number of counters for each of the numbers that they see and placing them underneath the proper number card. Now the next activity is a practical life activity. It is butterfly shaped sewing. In order to do this activity, your child is going to need a small embroidery hoop that has been pre-fitted with some embroidery fabric, as well as a small length of yarn attached to a darning needle, which is like a large sewing needle that has a blunt tipped end on it. And then for the actual butterfly shape, you can go online and find any butterfly template that you like. I will link the one that we use down below, but copy it onto the embroidery fabric and then show your child how to run the length of their yarn along the outline line of the butterfly shape. If your child has not had any experience with sewing up to this point, then you may want to backtrack first and offer them some basic lessons in how to complete a running stitch, which is one of the first stitches that a child in a Montessori preschool classroom would learn anyway. But once they have the basics of that and they're ready for more, then you can offer them an activity like this, which definitely ups the challenge. Now, if you have a younger child who is not quite ready for sewing yet, then you can modify this activity to make it a little simpler by turning it into a pin punching activity. And for that, all you need to do is print out the butterfly template on paper, mount it to a piece of cork board or a small cork trivet, and give your child an extra large push pin and show them how they can practice punching the push pin very carefully along the outline of the butterfly shape until they've basically cut out the entire butterfly using all of the very tiny holes. The next activity is another science and language activity. It's the types of butterflies, three-part cards. 
This activity is great for any child who wants to know the names of the different types of butterflies that they have been learning about. And again, just as before, you can have them match just the pictures if that's all they're ready for, or if they are experimenting with letter shapes and sounds, or maybe they're actually reading, then you can also have them match the small label card that goes along with it. And if you have an older child in your home who is already an independent reader, they can also do this activity. What they would do is actually start with the picture card and the label card separately they would challenge themselves to match the proper label to the picture and then go back and use the control card that has both parts to check their work to see if they match them correctly. The next activity is a sensorial activity called butterfly symmetry puzzles. So for this activity, your child is presented with a series of butterfly images that have literally been cut in half and your child's task is to match each of the corresponding halves back together. For toddlers, it's best to separate the halves of the butterflies into two separate piles and then lay out one of the piles on your child's work surface ahead of time. This way they can see what all of their options are. Then from the other pile, you're going to have them take one card at a time and compare it to the available options until they find the correct match and then they can place them together. Now for preschoolers and older children, not only will you want to give them a much larger number of cards to work with, but you may actually find that they also enjoy the challenge of being given all of the pieces together in one basket and then having the task of laying them all out on their work surface and finding all of the individual matches and then placing them together. And the last activity is a math activity called Butterfly Addition Strips. This activity is perfect for any child who is practicing their addition skills. And this set in particular is especially great for young preschoolers who are really just beginning to experiment with the concept of addition because it only goes up to sums of five in varying different ways. And I love the fact that it includes a visual representation of each of the number symbols using different quantities of butterflies because the child is then able to actually count the butterflies and really begin to have a much more concrete understanding of this very abstract concept of adding numbers together. All right, friends. So those are all the activities that I had to share with you today. And again, I have put links to all of the printables and other resources that you saw in this video in the description box down below. If you are interested in learning more about Montessori at home or positive discipline parenting, I offer a couple of e-courses that walk you through it step by step. So I will also be sure to leave a link to that in the description box down below as well, in case you're interested in checking it out. And just in case you are new to my channel, I also wanted to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series on this YouTube channel called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori at home with our children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.